my name is Eric Gustafson from Lake Michigan Christian Center. I want to welcome you to our online service today on April 26th. I hope you're going to stay with us and enjoy this wonderful time of ministry in the Word. But before we get started, I want to turn this over to my good friend Jennifer, who's going to be doing some of the announcements for us today. Hey guys, LMCC family, it's Jennifer here to bring you your morning announcements. Yes, I know, you get me for a second week in a row. You did it on the last row. Austin! Austin! Je All right, LMCC family, let's try this one more time and hopefully I won't get hit in the head with the roll of toilet paper. Good morning and welcome to this morning's um, service online. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to give you some morning announcements if you're ready. We welcome you to our morning online services and please know that we also offer additional services online at noon on Sundays and at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays at Lake Michigan Christian Center .online .church. So please join us. On Sunday evenings, we encourage you to join us for 6 p.m. worship service on our LMCC Facebook family page. That's with Matt Rodriguez and Tanya Rodriguez. And if you're anything like me, I sure enjoy seeing the whole family worship together. So please join us. If you would like more information about what's going on at our LMCC family at Lake Michigan Christian Center, please feel free to text the number 97000 to LMCC or send us an email at kim at lmcc.church. For those of you who are in the know, we are offering two online classes right now. And if you're interested in learning more about the Bible or you would like to lead a small group in the future, for more information, please review the bulletin board and follow these announcements or send an email to Pastor Eric at pastoreric at lmcc.church. LMCC family, during this time that we have to be forced into social distancing to practice safe health standards, please let us not forget to be faithful givers and to continue to give in tithes and offerings. You can do that by going to our LMCC Facebook page online. Giving is also available at LMCC Facebook page and checks can be made to Lake Michigan Christian Center. And that's it for the morning announcements. I'd like to thank everybody for joining me this morning and I'd like to give it away to Pastor Eric for a wonderful message. And, and what word of the Lord has to bring for us today. Blessings on you all, and I love and miss you much. Take care. to welcome you here to this service and to this time in the word what I'd like to do is if we could just begin this time with just a word of prayer father I thank you so much for this opportunity just to gather together around your word to receive strength to receive encouragement to receive wisdom and insight God and father I pray that as I share this word I'm asking and praying that God you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear, God, what your spirit is saying to us as a church, as a people in this moment. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to minister to you a word this morning. Uh, I'm calling basically what kind of a person are you becoming in this season? Uh, again, we've, we've talked about this and we're in the midst of this uh, coronavirus pandemic and, and all of this social distancing and this, this disconnectedness that we're feeling. God is doing things in it. And, and if we have ears to hear and eyes to see, we're, we're going to perceive and pick up on, on what he's doing and, and what he's saying. And, and one of the things that I just really felt in my spirit this week for all of us 
is just the challenge from the Lord is, is again, what kind of a person are you becoming? Through every season of life we go through, God is doing things in our lives. So I want you to look in your Bibles at Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. Solomon uh, as he writes this, says this, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer, and it gathers its food in the harvest. And and what, what Solomon is, is sharing is just the wisdom of the natural created order that God has set in place, is that there are certain things that we're supposed to be doing in the various seasons of life. And of course, the ant understands that in, in, in times of, of summer, uh, in times of harvest, that's the time to gather. That, that's the time to gather and, and to continually store up resources for, for lean times. And, and he talks about that, that that is a pattern of wisdom that we are, are supposed to follow in this life as, as followers of, of the Lord Jesus. And, and I think this is a great, um, a great admonition for us in this season is what are you storing up? What are you gathering in this season? Uh, one of the things I shared last week, if you remember, I talked about the paradox of, of the narrows, okay? This idea that in this narrowing that we're experiencing as a nation, this, this, nat this natural or national um, uh, constriction of so many of the liberties that we have as Americans because of this virus, um, it communicates to us a couple of things. Number one is that God is in the narrows, that, is that God is doing things and God has resources for us in the narrows. And, and the second thing that I talked about is that in this time, we are all uniquely responsible for getting as close to God as we want in this time frame. And, and some Christians are really utilizing this season to draw near to the Lord in, in this quieting, in this national Sabbath rest. They are drawing near to the Lord. They're expe they're you know expending and and ex you know enjoying extended seasons of prayer and, and time in the Word, while other Christians are, are not. And and it's important for us to learn this lesson that that Solomon gives about the ants is that listen, in this season we're supposed to be storing up resources for the next phase or for the next season. And and again in this time we need to be mindful uh, of these things. And one of the things we've got to realize is that crises reveal us, okay? It is said that crises make or break us. But, but I think a more accurate way to describe it is that crises simply reveal us. They tell us where we're at. If you've ever been to a mall, you, and, and you, especially a big mall, and you're unfamiliar with it, you'll, you'll probably find the map in one section of the mall, and they'll have this big yellow sign or this, you know, that says, you are here, okay? This particular crisis is a you are here moment for us as Christians where we can truly make the most of this opportunity or we can squander it. And so I want you to look in your Bibles at the Gospel of Mark where he talks about the parable of the soils. And in particular, he talks about four different soils, but I want to focus on the last two because I believe they're very, very pertinent for us today. When Jesus is talking about soils, he's basically talking about the heart condition, our heart condition, okay? And in Mark chapter 4, if you look at verse number 18, okay, um, verses 18 through 20, that's what I want to focus on right now. Jesus said this, he said, these are the ones that are sown, again, the, the sower is sowing the word, these are the ones that are sown among thorns. They're, they're the ones that hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and they choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But then by contrast, Jesus says this in verse 20, but these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit, some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100. Okay. So Jesus is essentially talking about the fact that in any time in life, the word is being sown. Opportunities for spiritual growth are occurring all the time. Our heart condition determines whether, the, whether what is sown will grow and become fruitful or whether what is sown will not grow, will stagnate or languish or actually become, um, you know, basically an unfruitful 
type of, of Christian. And, and that's what I want to talk about um, today as far as what kind of a person are you becoming. So the first main point I want to talk about is this, <clears throat> is that you can become a person whose spiritual life is considered non-essential. And, and that is essentially uh, the, the thorny ground, the thorny soil, is what Jesus was talking about is this is the type of person whose spiritual life is peripheral to worldly pursuits. Okay, this is somebody who their Christian life is, is, is something that they consider perhaps a hobby. They might consider it perhaps at times something they're very interested in, but it is not central and core to their lives. So, so when, when the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches and, and the desires for other things come in and crowd in in their lives, um, their spiritual life ten, tends to become pushed to, to the margin. Okay, and um, and it's interesting, um, you know, if you contrast what Americans in the Western world experience uh, as contrasted with our brothers and sisters in, let's say, the Middle East. Okay, uh, it, it's very, very interesting. Is is that the struggles that, that that our brothers and sisters in the Middle East are facing is the stick of persecution, but in the Western world. And in America in particular, with so much of the bounties and the blessings of the Judeo-Christian worldview, uh, we, we, are, are, we struggle with uh, not the stick, but the carrot, right? The carrot of entertainment and the carrot of pleasure and the carrot of personal peace and comfort and convenience and, and affluence. And, and this is what the average Christian in America, um, th this is what seduces them. This is what causes their spiritual life to languish, la languish, okay? In other words, th their, their desires for spiritual things are lessened because of the carrot or the benefits of the Western world in which we live. And again, there's so many benefits of living in this world, and, 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 so, and there's so many benefits of living in the West and living in America, you know, the freedoms that we enjoy. But, but it's interesting, in, in this time where there are essential industries, like food, you know, like, like grocery stores, and, and, and like obviously hospitals, and you know, the, the medical profession, and then there's non-essential industries right now in this pandemic, you know? Um, in other words, grocery stores, yes, but the bar, no. Um, uh, uh, you, you can... Um, you can go to the gas station right now, that's essential, but you can't buy seed or, or, or flower seed to put in your yard, right? Uh, drive through restaurants are okay, they're, they're essential, but gathering as a church, that's non-essential. In other words, in this time frame, it's interesting, all of these essential and non-essential distinctions are being made, and, and rightfully so, to some degree, we understand that it's prudential. It's the right thing to do for the common good to help people. But, but one of the things I want to challenge you with, church, is in a time where church is considered non-essential by the world and by federal, state, and local government, the challenge I want to have for you is, do you consider church and the gathering of the church as non-essential? I realize we have to do it right now. But one of the challenges and the things that Jesus talks about in, in the parable of the soils and, and the, the illustration of the thorny ground is due to the cares of this life and due to the desires for other things and, and the deceitfulness of riches, the, the captivation of the American dream, the allurement of sports and all of the different distractions, okay? Does that cause you to consider the church and church attendance and being involved in ministry non-essential? Or maybe perhaps more to the point, is there something that is deemed non-essential right now that you are more interested in pursuing than gathering together as the local church? Okay, again, this is a gut check. Again, we're talking about what kind of a person are you in this time frame? What kind of a person are you becoming? This is a you are here moment for us. And, and again, the, the challenge for all of us is what are we allowing to, to, to captivate us? What are we allowing to, uh, to, to be the central and the core thing in our lives? 
by contrast to the individual on who, who builds his life or at least has a heart condition resembling thorny ground is, is the individual who, who highly values their spiritual life. Their, their spiritual life, church, church life, ministry, church attendance, in other words, involvement and all those types of things, it's essential. It's, it's not, it, it's not non-essential. All right. And again, Jesus says this in Mark 4, verse 20. These are the ones who are sown on good ground. They hear the word, they accept it, they bear fruit, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. Okay. These are individuals that are growing right now. These are individuals, again, that, that they're having extended times of prayer. They're having extended times in the word. They're, they are like the ant in Solomon's metaphor, okay, is, is this idea that, that in this season they're recognizing the downtime at, for the value that it is. And, and again, you know, I'm sure it's a little bit challenging as you're sequestered together w with your families, and, and I get all that. But, but these are individuals that recognize that this is a season that the Lord has, has graciously supplied us in the midst of all of this craziness to, to draw near to the Lord. These are individuals that mourn the absence of the gathered church because they rightly recognize that the church is, is the pillar and the ground of the truth, as, as, as the book of Timothy says. They recognize that it's the manifold wisdom of God, uh, you know, as, as Paul says in, in the book of Ephesians in the third chapter. They recognize the, the fact that, that the importance of gathering together, and they mourn that, okay? In other words, we're talking about a gut check here. We're talking about a you-are-here moment for us as, as believers. And, and a great litmus test or gut check for us is, do you miss being involved in the gathered church? Does it really bother you? Okay, And I realize we don't know how long this is going to last, but there should be something in our hearts where we grieve the absence of gathering together as believers. We recognize the value of, of church. We recognize the value of ministry. In fact, this is exactly why I, I opted a couple of weeks ago to fire back up my Catalyst University classes, although they're going to be online. How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth is online now on YouTube, and you can get access to the information if you just um, request it of me via email. Um, small group leadership, I, I'm, I'm offering that via Zoom on Sunday mornings at 9.45. In other words, I want to continue to, to provide opportunities for us as a church in the midst of the separation that, that we can still grow, that we can still, again, in this downtime, um, develop resources, gain knowledge, gain skills, gain some abilities, so that when all of this is passed, we can hit the ground running as a church. So, in reality, the distinction is, is simply between the Christian in this season that is being unfruitful or, or the Christian that's being fruitful, okay? Um, this crisis is, is revealing and, and should be revealing to all of us where does our allegiance lie? Where, does our, where do our priorities lie? On what and to whom do we center our lives? In other words, like the ants that Solomon talked about, what are you gathering in this season? What type of spiritual growth are you gathering in this season? To what are you sowing in this season? It says in Galatians chapter 6, Verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. In other words, we're all sowing seeds. We're all, we're all at a place where, where we are sowing to such a degree that, that we are sowing seeds for our future. And, and this is a great time for you fathers to be the priest of the home. If you're not distracted and entangled by having to go to work all the time and, and because of the cancellation of a lot of external things, this is a great time for fathers to, to get together and pray with their wives, to pray with their kids. This is a great time for families to have family altar times where, where, we, where the whole family gets together and, and prays. In other words, it's, it's a time to be sowing 
in the spirit, to be a fruitful people. Because again, the contrast that Jesus makes in the parable of the sower is that you are either going to have the heart condition that where fruit starts to ripen and then it stops and then it dies on the vine or the Christian whose life is such that, that they draw nourishment from the Lord deeply, they abide in the vine and they, they, they produce, their lives produce fruit 30, 60 and a, and a hundred fold. And, and the, the words of C.S. Lewis in his book, Mere Christianity, I think are really, really good and, and describe kind of the idea that I'm getting at here when I'm talking about what kind of a person are you becoming in the season? He says this, he says, every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, that part of you that chooses into something a little different from what it was before. And taking your life as a whole, with all of your innumerable choices, all of your life long, you are slowly turning this central thing either into a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature either into a creature that is in harmony with God and with other creatures or and with itself or else into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is eternal. It is joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us at each moment is progressing to one state or the other. And so again, you know, C.S. Lewis does not mince any words, but he reveals to us as Christians, or even if you're watching this video and you're not a believer, you are becoming something. You are becoming fitted for heaven, or you are becoming fitted for an eternity in hell, and the choice is yours. Choose life, choose death, choose to grow in your walk with the Lord in this time, or choose to reject it and become self-indulgent. The choice is yours. And so I wanna just leave you with this, church. I, I, I just, I wanna challenge you, avail yourself of all the opportunities that we are providing in this online format. I know it's different. I know it's unusual. We're all kind of learning. We're all trying to get our bearings. Be a part of our Saturday evening prayer at 6 p.m. Obviously, be a part of the Sunday morning service that you're a part of right now. Be a part of the Sunday evening worship time at 6 p.m. on our LMCC family page and just enjoy the times of worship that are provided by Matt and Tanya Rodriguez. <clears throat> get involved in the How to Read the Bible class. Get involved in the small group leadership class. Again, avail yourself of opportunities where time and distance don't matter so much because of the online format we're offering. This is an opportunity for you to grow. This is an opportunity for you in this season to be bearing fruit even in the midst of the disorientation of the social distancing. So can I pray with all of you? Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together as a congregation before your word. And Father, my prayer is that all of us become a people that their hearts, their lives are calibrated towards heaven. Their hearts and lives are calibrated towards growing in intimacy with the Lord, growing and abiding in the vine. My heart's desire is for all of us, Father God, that in this season of, of restraint, as it were, in this season of constriction, growth takes place nonetheless, because Lord, our hearts resemble that good soil. Father God, where God, the word is being received and the word is growing and producing a harvest 30 and 60 and a hundredfold what has been sown. And I also want to offer a prayer for any one of you that are watching this, that you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm not walking with you and I want to walk with you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me and make me a new creation, make me a new person. I want to start all over again. And so Lord Jesus, from this day forward, I will follow you, I will serve you with all of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen.
And if you prayed that prayer, I encourage you to reach out to us at Lake Michigan Christian Center. Check out the website. Send me an email at Pastor Eric, P-A-S-T-O-R-E-R-I-K, at lmcc.church. Would love to talk with you. Would love to encourage you. Church, it's been a pleasure to be with you. And I just pray a blessing over all of you for the rest of this week. Take care.